Hello folks, this is Ayat Rajha from InspireToys.com and today we have the Moto G4 Plus smartphone here with us for a detailed hands-on review of the same. So guys, without wasting much time, let's begin. So guys, let's first talk about the build and display of this device. It comes with a 5.5 inch TFT LCD 1080p Full HD display with Corning Gorilla Glass 3. So that's something that's covered good enough on this one. On the back, we have the camera module which is a 16 megapixel camera and you get a flash also. So that's something good. And apart from that, on the right hand side, we have the power button and the volume rocker. And on the bottom of the smartphone, we have the small micro USB port and the sides have nice metallic finish and as can be seen over here you get this one and on the top we have the 3.5 mm jack centrally aligned which is always the case with Motorola phones it comes with a 3000 mAh non removable battery and it comes with dedicated micro SD card slot and two sim slots all of which are good enough and apart from that it comes with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 617 chipset and it comes with 2GB of RAM and on the Moto G Plus there are two options the 2GB RAM and 3GB RAM variant and 16GB internal storage and 32GB internal storage so that's something good and apart from that these are all of the sensors that you get on these devices so that's also good enough and the list of sensors shows that there are certainly a lot of sensors on this one and apart from that when you look at the smartphone itself it comes with Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow and that means that almost everything on this device feels snappy enough the android experience is pure android so no bloatware pre-installed nothing it feels snappy right from the first step the device weighs around 155 grams and supports almost all of the lte bands in india band 1 band 3 band 5 band 8 and band 40 and apart from that the overall android experience on this one was good enough motorola almost always gets their software right and this time also multitasking felt nice enough 45,865 was the score on the Antutu benchmark which is above average score not that great 726 on the single core and 3128 on the multi core score the multi core score is definitely high enough higher than the Moto Nexus 6 which was earlier and single core score wasn't that great 58.9 frames per second on the Nina Mark 2 benchmark which is an average score and 22,000 above score on the quadrant standard which is also an above average score not that great enough all of the gestures from before the flick to open the torch and just flick the smartphone twice to open the camera module are still present and all of these work as good as before. We have got front facing speakers, maximum volume was ok but not best in class on this one but the front facing speakers do make a great deal and do enable a good sound output and talking about USB OTG it was very easy to set up the USB OTG just connect your USB OTG with the pen drive to the smartphone and it got detected automatically so no hassle over here and this was easy and the camera on this one is a 16 megapixel camera on the Moto G Plus and the front camera is a 5 megapixel camera the primary camera on this one is a 16 megapixel camera and it comes with face detection autofocus, laser autofocus and f2.0 aperture, color balancing, dual LED flash, professional mode, quick capture, you get the best shot, you can tap anyway to capture 4x digital zoom and it also comes with a burst mode and the pictures we took had surprisingly good color reproduction as could be seen. They the camera also comes with slow motion video, full HD 30 FPS videos, it has video stabilization at 720 frames per second and the selfie camera comes with a wide field of view 84 degrees. So it was evident in the selfies as I could cover a lot of detail and the sharpness was really great in the selfies and apart from that it has the best shot mode which selects the best shot and I am looking very fair and beautiful over here but it's not the actual case. The face has a lot of pimples which are not being shown over here so that's some sort of beautifying action over there and apart from that when you see on the low light areas there are some compression artifacts which can be seen over here so low light performance still needs major improvement but this time around Motorola has done a really great job with the camera and 
it's a departure from the previous Motorola phones which needed a lot of work in the camera department. Even the camera application itself has seen some nice major updates and it does look good than before. It does offer even more functionality than before. So that's something great about the camera right now and it also has active viewfinder which can recognize QR codes and barcodes and if you click on the top over there you get access to all of the different modes like the professional mode, slow motion mode, the video recording mode. So that's something that has been changed in the camera and still works nice enough. And let's just move on. When we tried to play some small games we found out that the gaming performance was okay enough. The phone does come up with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 617 chipset and the 3GB variant would definitely be able to play almost any game with ease. But Stay tuned for our full gaming review wherein we would tell you more about this. The fingerprint sensor worked fine almost every time we tested it. It was really fast and accurate every time we tested the fingerprint sensor. It was nice but the position is little bit awkward. It would have been more better if it was on the back at the M slot on the phone. And looking at the phone, the display, the build, everything does feel nice enough. The price for this one would be 15999 which is a little bit higher price for the Moto G4 Plus as there are many other good smartphones in even lower ranges. The Moto G 2016 edition would be at 13499 for a price of around 15999 the Moto G4 Plus does offer you decent value for money and these are all of the specification storage variants for this smartphone which are available and overall the feel, the build and it does feel very sturdy in hand. All of these are good enough and this smartphone does nail few of the things very nicely and the stock android experience is one of the major buying factors for many people out there it does feel really snappy enough because of the stock android experience and there is no laggy skin over here so guys this was it for this video in case you like this video don't forget to hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel a full gaming review full detailed reviews for this smartphone and other comparison videos and video samples also would come soon so guys stay tuned for that and stay inspired to us